Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas and if you don't know me, I do a lot of content on web design, no code development and AI development. And I've been posting YouTube videos on a daily basis for the past six months, right? So every day I kind of wake up, eat breakfast, think of an idea and film it, right? So it's been a quite a challenge, challenge for me. And not only is the video itself a challenge but also creating the content around the video which in this case includes the thumbnail so that's why today i kind of want to go ahead and show you how i created all these thumbnails um, in about 10 to 15 minutes right using this template that i've actually created uh, by myself um, and use them for my videos right it started off with something not so nice more simple looking and now it's kind of looking better and better as you can see with some gradients, um, with some logos and some larger text, right? So if this is something interesting for you guys, let's stick around and get started. So the tool that I use to create thumbnails is called Figma, right? And Figma does have a few paid plans. Um, now I am using for the Figma for free. So I have this one project with a bunch of different pages and I have this one page called YouTube. And that's where I basically create all of my different thumbnails, right? And this YouTube page. So you don't really have to pay for Figma. You could if you wanted to, but I'm using it for free, right? So this is like a free solution for you for different thumbnails. So this is my first thumbnail. I use this picture that I had from, you know, my first resume or something like that. And then I used pictures, I used thumbnails without my face, but realized that it, you know, showing my face is better. So I showed it again use my face a couple times and I was like, all right, I have to do something a little bit more creative. I don't want to show my face all the time. So I started like taking screenshots of me in the camera, right? Started, you know, showing this face again, more screenshots. And then I decided to take pictures of myself. So I started to take pictures of myself in uh, my web uh, webcam. Um, I asked my wife to take pictures of me with my iPhone 16, right? So it's pretty good quality. As you can see, it's pretty sharp. Um, and this one also with my iPhone 16. So it's very easy to get started. You don't need a professional photographer. I actually hired one um, like a couple weeks in to take different pictures of me and it looks much better. As you can see, I also have this black shirt. So it kind of combines with the background a little bit better. But I want to kind of show you how I built this template. So it started off going back up like this and now it looks more and more like this, right? We have the interface and the logos and all of that, and it's looking a little bit more organized and higher quality, so to say. Now we can use two of my latest uh, thumbnails as an example. I'm just gonna copy them over here and show you uh, how I build these. So we're gonna kind of dissect these, right? Let's bring them up here and well, the first thing that we notice is we have, let me increase this. We have this, let me unlock these layers. Some of these layers are locked because they're overlapping. So we have this one canvas that's black, right? This is the base, the base canvas. I make it black because if I were to make it white, it might show some whiteness. Yeah, you see, we don't really want that. We want it to be like the dark color. So I leave it like that. Then we also have, so let me just move some things around. I have like a little blur here. As you can see, I have myself. I have these other types of blurs. And other blurs or other gradients. Let me just organize this. But as you can see, I have a bunch of different layers, right? So I start off. Okay, let me go like this. I start off by adding like this type of grid, right, that we have up here. And it's only covering like the left side. And I have another one for the right side. It's basically the same thing, but I duplicated it and put it on the right side. And we have like this little grid system that I kind of like how it looks like. Um, so I put that as the base layer. I put these on top of that. So basically these are different colors, right? 
so I was doing, I was talking about lovable, this tool, and these are like the lovable colors. So I was using these colors, but you can basically change these colors. So I can make these, instead of orange, I can make this like a blue color. So switch this to, to something bluish, right? Something more like this. And you can select this and make this more, I don't know, dark blue, dark blue, purple style. Right, so we bring in these different image, these different uh, color gradients. We bring them in, put them on top of everything. Right, so this would be like the base layer. Now, I always have an image of myself, and under my image, I put like a little radiance, uh, a, 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 a shadow, and that's because I want there to be some shadow behind me, so that it looks a little bit more re realistic. So I can add a picture like this. And if I want to switch a picture, let's say I want this one, I can just go ahead and click here and copy and paste. And let's just put this to fit. There we go. And delete the lower one. So now we have this, this one fit over here, right? And we can go ahead and uh, click on command and make this a little bit closer. So we can do something like this. And now... Um, this would be like the kind of the first version of this. We can add more layers, like darker layers like this, so that um, the screens could kind of go behind that and fade away, right? And then we can add some of the text above that. So instead of having the text under this, so let's put this gradient like this, and below the text, we can see that this text is above and has... A good, you know, contrast between the background and the foreground. And then what I like to do is I also like to add this, and I like to add this below the text. So the text is always crystal clear, and everything else in the background kind of blends in with the text, and it's just the background, right? I also like to add some different types of, of uh, text to kind of show what different things are, right? So this one can be like... Uh, dashboard right you can write something like that I don't know whatever you want um, again if there's something a little bit too dark you can edit that out to be like this now for the logos I do have a bunch of logos so you can see I have Figma lovable framer journalist AI I have a bunch of different logos stripe and what I do is I just go to Google Chrome and in Chrome I just search for like stripe logo right and then you can go here and you see that this is has like this this uh square white white and gray square background that means that it's a png so you can just copy this image bring it into figma paste it right you have this nice png but maybe you don't want to have this word the word logo you want it to be more in a circle so you can grab this for example and it's also like in this png mode so you can just copy this bring them in bring this into figma and boom now uh, some of these things to add volume so if i want to put this here let's say that this is like something to do with stripe right this is like some i don't know screen dash stripe dashboard that you built um what you can do is you can add some volume so right now it doesn't look like it's really hovering over the the ui but what you can do is you can select or you can apply a drop shadow so if I press paste, you can see that it has now like this little shadow. If I go back, you see that it's there, right? And basically it's under effects. And here you can just drop a nice drop shadow under your, your specific logo, right? Now to export this and to actually bring this into YouTube, all you got to do is just rename this. I'm going like 161. This was 165. So this would be like 166, right? and click on this i would move this around go like that just to make sure that everything is inside because sometimes some things can be like it can look like it's inside let's say this one and then you move this around and you see that it's not really inside the frame so you just got to make sure that all of the elements are inside of the frame right and then once you're sure of that you can go ahead and export this as a png right and then once you're on youtube you can actually import two thumbnails so I always tend to do that I import the first one 
and then the second one and then after a few days you can see uh like the share which one performed best so in this case this thumbnail one performed best i guess it's because my face was kind of in the background and this was a little bit more elaborate as to you know the lo two logos right and then you can see like the actual function that if i click here this goes here right so um i would always do that so just do like a second variation you can add a third or fourth or fifth right it's up to you but um yeah that's basically the whole thing of how i would create a thumbnail in uh in youtube or for youtube in this case now i hope you enjoyed this short little video um if you do want to use my thumbnail template i will have it in the description below for you to use but basically this is it this is how i do it it's as simple as that you can see all of this work that i've done over the past six months every day just hustling and adding in a new thumbnail right so you can do it today um, i totally recommend anyone to start a youtube channel and if i bet i guess if you're watching this video you are starting already um, but yeah figma is the best way you can get started for free and you can start off with my template so thank you guys so much for watching hope you have a wonderful day Bye bye